welcome back. At the end of the last video, I'd reinstalled both cylinder heads and the valve rockers and push rods. The thermostat was in very poor condition, and so a replacement had been ordered. The new one simply pushes into the recess inside the thermostat housing. Once in place, a rubber o-ring secures the thermostat in place. I've taken the opportunity to give the intake manifold a good clean before it's refitted, just using a trusty old blue toothbrush, some brake parts cleaner and wipes. Cleaned it up within just a few minutes. Also given some of the exposed metal parts a quick coat with red engine lacquer. With the engine set at top dead center, I can now adjust the preload on the valves. With the engine in this position, half of the valves are closed, and these can all be adjusted at once. Using a 5.8 socket, simply tighten the adjuster nut until there is no free play left in the push rod. Once all the free play is eliminated, one further 360 degree turn is applied to set the loading on the valve. I then re simply repeat this task for each of the eight valves in the closed position before rotating the engine once more and repeating for the remaining eight valves. After completing the valve preload adjustment, I can now fit the new intake manifold gaskets. These are fitted dry without the use of sealant. They also have a pair of small retaining lugs on the underside to hold them in position when the manifold is lowered onto them. The manifold is simply lowered into place and then secured using the eight bolts, which are tightened by hand at first and then torqued down in the incorrect sequence. Once the manifold was secured, I was able to rough fit the electrical system, including fitting the new starter motor. With the wiring roughly fitted, I then refitted the rocker covers on both sides. This was followed by the raw water pump, the alternator and fuel pumps, then the throttle linkages. With these systems in place, 
it was time to reconnect the hoses for the cooling system, remembering to refit the plastic drain plugs at the bottom of the lower block. I decided to fit new spark plugs before fitting the exhaust system back into place, simply because the access is easier. I started on the starboard side first, working from cylinder 8 forward to cylinder 2, screwing each plug in by hand first, then just the final tightening with the socket, and attaching the plug leads with their numbered tags on them. Same was then repeated on the port side. The port side exhaust manifold simply bolts into place using six bolts, making sure that the water feed hose at the front is fitted in advance. The manifold to riser gasket is just laid flat on the manifold without any sealant. It's important to make sure that the mating surfaces here are flat, clean and dry before placing the gasket in place. Carefully the riser is lowered into place and one of the securing bolts is loose fitted to act as a guide for the others. Three out of the four bolts are used to hold either the power steering reservoir or the ECU bracket in place. Once these ancillaries are in place, the bolts can be progressively and sequentially tightened to ensure that the riser remains flat to the manifold. With the riser now secured, the elbow and rubber bellows can be fitted and the band clamps secured in place. The final job on this side is to refit the exhaust temperature sensor and ensure that the signal cable is routed underneath the exhaust before plugging it into the sensor itself. This prevents the cable from being crushed by the engine bay hatch. The same was then repeated for the starboard side.
On this side, only two of the bolts are used to secure the main fuse bracket. Again, the bolts are tightened progressively and in sequence to ensure that the riser is pulled down evenly. So that's it, everything is now refitted, reconnected and ready to go.